Hello YouTube, welcome to Coding with Dom. I'm Dom and this is me coding. Today we will be looking at how to run your tests with Cucumber. Um, for those of you that don't know what Cucumber is, it is basically a programming language, I guess, that allows you to write tests in a human readable format. Uh, this is me explaining it, not knowing very much about it. I have used it in the past, but I don't know very well the definition. If you want to know more, do check out uh, this website, docs.cucumber.io. I recently learned how to do this Zoom thing. I'm really going to abuse it in this video. But uh, do check out docs.cucumber.io. And as always, if you enjoy this video, please remember to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment down below if you have ideas for more videos, because I'm running out of ideas. I don't know what more to do. Shh, don't tell anyone, though. And so, yes, today, what we will be doing is running tests on Nightwatch with Cucumber. To do that, I'm gonna be using a library called Nightwatch API. I recently found this out because I used to use a different library called Nightwatch Cucumber, and that has been deprecated in favor of this. And um, what it is, is basically an interface to the Nightwatch API um, that simplifies a few things, allows you to run Nightwatch tests without using the Nightwatch runner. Thanks to the Nightwatch API package, we'll be able to use the Cucumber runner um, while mapping Cucumber code to the Nightwatch API. It will all make sense in a minute when we go through the readme. It's nightwatchapi.netlify. There you go. This is the URL that you want to look for. Um, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, we'll do it together just so I can show you how it works. Um, so the first thing you want to do is grab this line of code, npm install. We already have Nightwatch, so we're not going to be installing that. And I'm going to save everything like this. We already have Chrome driver as well. Cucumber pretty. Not sure what that is, but there we go. And we'll give it a save. Then we need to configure Nightwatch.js. Here um, it's telling us how to configure stuff from scratch, but again, I want to extend my configuration because I already have some kind of stuff in there. So I'm going to be doing a similar thing to what I already have in this file. Nightwatch.cucumber.conf.js If you haven't seen my previous videos, I explain how to extend configuration, how to use one basic configuration and add extra stuff on top of it. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm gonna, I have a nightwatch.conf.js which contains all of my common um, common settings that I don't wanna redefine in each file. So that's why I'm uh, creating a new nightwatch.cucumber.conf.js so I can have a dedicated configuration for Cucumber and then I'll have a dedicated script for that. In your case, you might have just one configuration file and you might not have to do this, but at least you know how you can do it. Um, so what I'm doing is, I don't need this anymore. I have my base configuration and then I'm gonna be extending my base configuration. I'm probably gonna need source folders. Uh, I won't need this, I won't need any of this stuff. And then I can export my config. So let's have a look at what Cucumber tells us to do. Let's do that. Um, test settings, so this is all stuff that I already have, and then we need to configure Cucumber. So we need to create a JavaScript configuration file called cucumber.conf. This file is responsible for setting up the default timeout, starting the web driver, and creating the session. So uh, let's create this as a cucumber.conf js boom require cucumber this all makes sense so i'm just going to save that what is it doing so it seems like it's uh, grabbing some stuff from the cucumber runner basically uh, set default timeout so this is the timeout max timeout that a test can do by default um, if your test is waiting for something or if it's waiting for something to happen uh, if it waits for more than 60 seconds then the test will t uh, default well, timeout, sorry. Um, then what are we doing? Before all of the tests start, we make sure that we start WebDriver and that we create the session. This is using this library called Nightwatch API, so it will use the uh, configuration in nightwatch.cucumber.conf.js, but it will use that through these functions called create session, close session, start WebDriver, and stop, web, stop WebDriver. So that's what it's doing right here. It's gonna start WebDriver, create a session, 
then once all the tests are finished it will close the session and then stop webdriver at this point we can actually write a feature file so this is an example features.google feature i don't think i'm going to do google feature again if you've seen a previous video you'll see that google has blocked me so i'm not able to use google because my tests were firing too many requests and i start getting capture and stuff like that so we'll use hacker news because they don't seem to have blocked me yet um so features what's this features.google feature rename features google dot feature i'm going to call it hacker news dot feature and this is what i'm going to do is hacker news so searching hacker news open so how does cucumber actually work um as you can see it's it's human readable code. It's not a programming language. It doesn't look like a programming language. Although there are some keywords. So the feature is the equivalent of a test case. So the whole uh, test suite, sorry. It's the whole file, everything in this, uh, every test case in this file is inside this feature, which is called hacker new search. The scenario is the specific test case. So we have the test suite. This is in Nightwatch terms. So we have a bit of a translation, a test suite and a test case. And then each of these is a step. And the step starts with a special keyword. It can be a given, then, when, and. And it's very similar to what you might have already seen in Agile when you're writing user stories. And one of the very, I think, ambitious way of writing tests, but I've seen some people do it, is to have product managers, business analysts, the people that actually write user stories write those user stories in this format directly so that those user stories can actually become test cases. Now, it's quite hard because what happens is that each of these lines is then mapped to a, a command inside Nightwatch. So we map this specific sentence to an action in Nightwatch. And this is obviously prone to spelling mistakes, typos, uh, it's case sensitive, if I'm not mistaken. So it, you, you need to be very precise in the way that you write this. Um, nonetheless, it can be very powerful and it can be a good way to write tests in a way that anyone could read them. Quality specialists, for instance, quality assurance people, if they're not very comfortable with JavaScript, this is a good way to empower them to write tests. Um, so we have given I open the Hacker News search page. So that's probably going to be something that opens a URL. Then we have, then the title is Hacker News, and that is testing the title. And the Hacker News search form exists. So let's have a look at the uh, how we translate this into uh, code. So for Cucumber to be able to understand and execute the feature file, we need to create matching step definitions for every feature step we use in our feature file. So every feature step, um, these are the feature steps. So uh, let's create step definitions. And in my case, it's going to be um, Hacker News. So step definitions, hackernews.js. We're going to grab all this and boom. So you can see that by using Nightwatch API, we're, we're grabbing the client instance, which is the same thing we were using when we're writing Nightwatch code. Let me just switch to a normal Nightwatch test. So you can see in my first test here, we were using the keyboard code browser, but it's the same thing. Browser and client are the same thing. And so as I can do browser.url here, I can do the same thing here. I open, this is all gonna be um, Hacker News, Hacker News. And I'm not going to use search page, I'm going to use home page. So let's change this again. Home page. Let me grab, uh, I have it in another file. Boom. So this is going to be return client.url and wait for element visible body. Let me just improve the indentation here a little bit because I can't read it. Okay. 
So I open Hacker News' homepage. Here we have given, then, and when, which are the keywords, like I said before. So you can define, you know, what is given. Given is probably the first step in your feature file all the time, every time. Then a, su a subsequent uh, steps, and and then and when are interchangeable. If I'm not mistaken, this is something that you're probably going to need to read into on the Cucumber documentation. But you can see here we're defining this as then the Hacker News search form exists. But in the feature file, uh, which I've already lost, we have and the Hacker News search form exists. Um, so the title is something. So this is a very cool thing about Cucumber. Um, if each step definition, is it called a step definition? I want to use the right, yes. Step definition uh, for each feature step is actually a regex. As you can see here, this is this JavaScript syntax for defining a regex. So what that means is that you can use regex to pull out uh, specific variables, and you'll find these variables in the callback that the then function, given function, whatever function provides. So here we can say then the title is Hacker News. Let me check what we actually want that to be. Yes, I think it's actually going to be Hacker News. Yeah, so the title is Hacker News. Um, but if the title were to change, I could change this variable without actually test changing the JavaScript code, because then this could be Hacker News title or something like that. And in the JavaScript code, all I, uh, I don't have to change anything, because this is already using this variable, which is really handy. Um, and then finally, the Hacker News search form exists. What we're checking for in our case, let me grab this. And let's see if it has a special name queue. That see, Hacker News and Google are using the same syntax. They're, they're onto something there. So uh, this is. I'm going to delete this because we're not actually using it. This looks right. Um, this looks. I think we've gotten to the end of the basic setup. All we need to do now is create an npm script in our package JSON to be able to execute the test with a short command. So I'm going to do. I'm going to copy this, but I'm going to edit it slightly. So let's go into my package JSON, not the lock. Boom. So I'm going to add a, this is going to be test cucumber. So it's going to use cucumber.js, require step definitions, format. Now what I'm not a fan of is that I don't see a way to tell it to use this configuration rather than this. So I am, well actually, I might not even need this. So let me delete this. I guess it can use the base configuration because I didn't see anything different. And let's try it out and see how it goes. Oh, are you ready? Okay, something went wrong. Oh, of course, run. I've been using yarn lately, so I'm not used to having to do run because with yarn you can just do, yeah, never mind. Run test cucumber, feature hacker new search, and it worked, and it's getting there. So it's running this feature hacker new search, scenario searching hacker news. Given I open a hacker news homepage, it checks the title, it checks for the search form existing, one scenario, three steps, and that's it. So this was a very brief intro into how you can actually run tests with Cucumber using the Nightwatch API, which I think is a very powerful um, connection between two worlds because Nightwatch API is incre incredibly powerful. It gives you a lot of simplified commands, um, as we've already seen in our previous videos. The Cucumber like a um, programming language, like I said, will uh, empowers people that aren't necessarily programmers to write tests. So that could be business analysts, pro product managers, quality specialists. Um, I think it's really, really useful. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, let me know down below in the comments. If you haven't, like I said at the beginning, if you have any ideas for new videos or new topics that you'd like me to cover, you'd like me to explain, you'd like me to show you how this stuff works, let me know. Um, thanks for following so far. I'll see you soon.